one. Now, yeah. Now, now the time has come to 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 move in in, in a certain sense to to the conclusion because this 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 is the the last the last lecture of of the the this cycle at least and uh, we have to move to to certain degree of conclusion pr provisional conclusion and and unsatisfying conclusion perhaps and perhaps from from this kind of from this point of view not real conclusions at all uh, but 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 uh, uh, just some some open problems open questions the the only conclusion uh, at the end uh, that that can be spoken of uh, in my in my opinion and uh, i i would like to remind the 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 the, the title of this topic uh, the, the topic i i proposed and th this was the, the need of introversion and uh, and uh, uh, the, the, this, this I believed that we could label this this attitude as need because of its global diffusion, at least as a trend, given that there are still some economical distances and some cultural differences between north and south, west and east and uh, in this sense there is a need when when evidently some something doesn't work when the situation is critical urgent uh, there is an urgent an, an, an urgency when the malaise is widespread but uh, it isn't a, a malaise, an empirical, specific, determined problem or, or malaise. It seems rather to be something involved in the contemporary way of life and contemporary way, global in this contemporary way of life. And this is not by chance that I try to focus on the concept of mandala, the image of mandala as a map of contemporary world. Uh, not, notwithstanding, I, I mean, general, general problem, notwithstanding its differences and the, the distances still existing in terms of culture, history, habits, social injustice and so on there is differences in, in the world but we can also speak on on image a global image of contemporary world and a need uh, that involves all the world uh, and uh, um, in, in in what we can name this is one, one of the problems, the image of the contemporary world. Do we have an image like this at, at our disposal? To have it, we should maybe put the epoch on the ground as it were a topic, a theme, an object. As it we were out of the epoch or as if this epoch were over. And uh, that is uh, searching through the unconscious with uh, a sort of visionary attitude, an image capable to give us intuitively an eye catcher for the current situation. Uh, it, is, it is clear, I mean, that uh, it is impossible to find a, a performed image for, for this pur purpose. It is impossible to have an already done 
already already prepared image at our disposal to, to trying to focus to to put in a shape the contemporary world we have we we could only find search it in the on the background of the consciousness and this is the reason why we we, we have to 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 beat in a certain sense this is a, this is a, a risk that we have to run to to try to find this image in 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 the backstage if you want of the consciousness of the collective culture collective consciousness and in in this sense in in the in our collective unconsciousness a, a, an image like this but uh, it, it it is impossible to take them for granted this this possibility this remains a possibility and not a, a reality and not a, a sure surely a reality just for this contradictory and problematic purpose to to gain an image of the world in which we live in an image adequate to the urgent need that circulates nowadays in the global atmosphere but not in a known form we 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 question we interrogate the thought of jung according to jung the discovery of the unconscious the predominance of a notion like psyche and the necessity of a specific knowledge about it would happen at a precise culminating point of the parable of the modernity represented the death of god the fall as we saw as the this emblematic statement by nietzsche the, the the death of god in other terms the fall of the supreme value uh, and uh, at the at the moment it is undi undeniable that the significance the importance and the reality of the so-called external world is determined uh, by what we we now can call projection what does projection projection mean a subjective content an idea a representation and a correspondent affection emotion uh, uh, something belonging to in any case to the internal inner world and voluntarily put in the object and uh, and uh, and we know the, the 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 breakdown of the is projection in this case in this case god reveals how in which sense the historical mentality of the western side of the world is structured in terms of extroversion it is good beauty right only what appears on the outside and only in this manifested material tangible condition i i ho i hope that uh, this concept this this contrivance this mechanism is clear enough Th there is no something like external world in a uh, naive uh, sense in the naive uh, taken for granted we know that the, the the significance the relevance the importance of the external world derives from a, a certain of a, 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 okay there is a problem can you can you hear me yes yes, yes. 
uh, I mean, the, 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 the importance and the reality of the external world is uh, uh, only a cultural orientation. And it, it, it is a, a typical Westerner feature. For, uh, it's only for this side of the world that, uh, that it is good, beauty, right? Only what appears on the outside and only in the tangible condition, material condition. Where this project, this is the Jung means uh, names this this uh, this mechanism like a projection. This is a projection, something that we put in in the object in the external wor world, but uh, uh, actually comes out uh, comes from the unconscious from the sub subject, subjective part of an individual. And this subject is not in individual actually, but collective. It's not a personal unconscious, but a, a collective unconsciousness. Therefore, where the projections come from? Evidently, from the inner world, from the subject, and precisely speaking from the unconscious, the highest pillar of the external world has fallen formless into the unconscious. This is the reason why for Jung, the death of God is nothing but a crisis, a periodic crisis, a timing crisis, of something, of a mechanism, a continuous mechanism, a normal mechanism in the history of the, of the psyche, but we can say also in the history of the spirit, because uh, this, this, the, the, all, all the content uh, are formed, according to Jung, by a, 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 an idea, an idol, and, and an image, if you want, and and uh, is determined the, the 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 force of this image is caused by the affection, the quantity of libido of energy, and so when when we have the the death of God we have only the crisis of a certain image of the, the, the deity. And at that time, the force come back fall in the unconscious. And indeed, it is uh, uh, not, not by chance, uh, it is uh, rather a chain with the disappearing of God, there is the dehumanization de of the human being and also the disanimation of the nature. You, you know that there is these three, these three, three concepts are interconnected. We have a, a certain image of God and, uh, and uh, in, uh, in, in group, we, we can say we have a certain connected image of a human being and also a certain Im image of, an, of the nature, of the, of the world. God, ego, or the person, and the world are the three uh, 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 hypotheses, very well known in, in, the, in the history of, the, of philosophy, for instance. So, with the death of God, Jung highlights, we, we, we have also the dehumanization of the human being and the, the disanimation of, of the nature. The three phenomena are inter, inter, interconnected and we need to turn ourselves inside because of the deep crisis and the collapse 
of the extroverted attitude of the mind. The need of introversion arises here just to follow and to give a new and renewed chance to the enormous amount of affection now lost and disappeared. We can say formless and free into the psyche. This is why Jung says the new thing is not to be found outside. The world outside is just the world in which we have been. And if anything new comes into the world, it must come from within. And we must be open to new experiences. This, this were, these were some notes written by Jung in the 1934. And ju just, to, just to note how, in which sense uh, uh, Jung, Jung spoke about to the need uh, or to turn uh, uh, within, uh, inside the, 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 the look, the look. Mon month ago, maybe, maybe seven, at the beginning of this cycle uh, of lectures, I quoted also a poet, Rilke, and, and his seventh elegy, just to underline the same need in a letter sent to von Ulevich in 1925, Rilke wrote that the true figure of life extends across the two realms. Through both moves the blood of the greatest circle. There is neither a behind nor a beyond, but the great Peril falls everywhere into a profound being. Uh, I think that uh, also these words are emblematic. Therefore, the task, the poetic task, was, is, still is, to bring what is seen and touched here, the our fleeting things the dear transient earth into the larger circle, the invisible wool. And, and not, not by chance Rilke wrote, nowadays the life, our life is not almost possible to be represented because it has all retreated in the invisible and the things are declining and uh, they can no longer be, be re replaced. And this observation of Rilke, of Rilke gives us the opportunity to think that the relevant point, what is at stake, the upheaval equal to the time, is now the threshold between visible and invisible. And I, I would like to, to read you again the, the, some verses of the seventh elegy by Rilke, uh, not, not, not in German, but in English, uh, evidently. And uh, uh, nowhere my beloved, there will be world unless within. Our lives advance through changing and more and more hollow the outside fades away. There are very, very famous Nirgens geliebte wird the Welt sein als innen. These are very, very famous verses. By, by Rilke. 
But in any case, we, we don't know. The need of introversion could remain a simple attempt, never completed, to turn around from the permanent collapse of the extroverted attitude of the mentality. And the problem, therefore, is the, is the introversion a general epochal need and as such rather a need of a shelter or of a, an escape route that is uh, is the introversion a consolation the notion of unconscious a notion which emerges within the modernity itself can concern the introversion and to which extent in any in other terms is the unconscious in relationship with others concomitant notions for instance the invisible the open the manifold or the impossibility the depletion or the exhaustion the event even the outside we know that there are some thinkers some authors who speak speaks about the la, la pensée du dehors the, the 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 thinking of the outside or uh, more the brahman the nirvana and, and so on different way or or ancient way to to imagine or to know or to propose some different orientation a new orientation a new old at the same time orientation and uh, uh, only the series only the whole or the result of the whole could reveal towards where the introversion turns. This is the problem. Given that we, we are speaking of uh, uh, the need of introversion, it is at the same time something known for an elite, some a few people, but, but when this need becomes uh, a general need we, we can we can say also uh, we can speak of need uh, e epochal uh, general global need of introversion maybe we have to collect to pick up all this different way of naming something similar uh, and uh, uh, to uh, a, a group to, to, to which also the unconsciousness belongs, but not in an exclu ex exclusive way, but with other notions, historical, well-known notions uh, uh, coming from different parts of the world. And from this point of view, each of these uh, notions can help us to determine what does introversion mean. In any case, is the unconscious, and from this point of view, it, it, is, it is not important to, to decide if this notion is discovered or reactivated, the notion of the unconscious, I mean. Is in any case the unconscious, the dimension into which we should orient our look? If yes, in which way we have to intend this dimension? We learned that for Jung, every position, any event 
due to the presence of the unconscious uh, is now double, ambivalent, a sign of alienation and a sign of, of destiny. That, that is a sign of a superior will, a superior way. The presence of the unconscious uh, according to Jung, it is it give, give, gives us these two different and, and from time to time opposites way, opposite way of interpret the phenomena. It is impossible to decide only for, for one or, or only for the other. The extroverted formamentis of the West is, as we know, and as Jung says, colonial and expropriates the other of his assets of cultural and spiritual goods too. This is the way through which the infatuated Westerner has tried to steal the appealing news of yoga and meditation from the Orient, from India. And Jung denounces this uh, uh, attempt to stealing. But at the same time, we know, as we, as we saw, at the same time, this was the opportunity to meet and to know uh, at the crucial moment of the history and during the crisis of its extroversion, millennial introverted formamentis, that is the oriental mentality. Uh, hence Jung's invitation to be stimulated by the oriental introversion. But at the same time, the necessity to elaborate a Western type of yoga in the wake of the Jewish Christian roots. This is a very, a very clear uh, position of Jung. Uh, there is a, a, a sign of decline of the, of the West, uh, but at the same time, a sign of the, his uh, uh, style of, uh, of orienting to, to be a colonial uh, look. And from this point of view, due to his, its uh, extroverted uh, attitude, it is good only what uh, we can perceive in the external world. So the, the Western eye looks the meditation and yoga and, and remain fa fascinated by, by this type of meditation and yoga, very exotic, and try to steal this, this training, this, this type of concentration. And Jung says that this is a typical step, the typical style of the extroverted formamentis mentality of, of, of the Western uh, type. But, and from, the, from this point of view, uh, Jung rec recommended not to uh, incorporate some exotic disciplines, but according to Jung, at, at the same time, this represents an opportunity. We, uh, at a certain point of uh, our crisis of the extroverted world mentality, we have the opportunity to meet some, a, another form to be, uh, uh, to exist. Uh, the introverted formamentis, the oriental, Formamentis. And this could be an opportunity, a fatal, a, a destinal opportunity to, to, to rearrange our mentality. But according to Jung, this is possible only if we try to elaborate a Westerner form of yoga from our 
cultural, religious roots. This means from the Jewish Christian roots and not copying by copying the yoga from the Orient. This is normal for the normal style of, 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 of being at the world by the Westerner, but, but not the real, what, to, what to, we real need to have, to elaborate. In the Jungian psychology, from this point of view, the presence of the Orient is not a mere exotic ornament, but an essential point of learning and confrontation. In this sense, the unconscious is not a personal bag or an appendix of repression of an individual. I'm, I'm thinking of the, the, the principal uh, meaning of the unconscious for Freud, but, but a collective dimension which has never been conscious and therefore something impossible to remember and impossible to forget because the collective unconscious has ne never been conscious, never been conscious before. And so this is the reason why it is impossible to remember and at the same time, it is impossible to forget. It is something never known, never met before. Not only as inner world, I mean the unconscious, the collective unconscious is not only the opposite of the external conscious world, Yes, this is one meaning of, uh, one sense of, of, of the notion of collective unconscious. But at the same time, and above, uh, above all, wherever the opposite, uh, exactly, wherever the opposites, the external and the and internal become indifferent, identical, one, in, in other terms, the unconscious is at the same time, the opposite of the, co of the conscious of the consciousness, but at the same time is the place where all the oppositions, all the opposites, the external and internal, the inner world too, also this opposition is is become becomes indifferent become the, the place where the all the opposition the opposites become become one be, become a form of identity become indifference so the unconscious as the, this the, the notion of the unconscious as always this double meanings Surely it is, it is the place which contains all the creative resources, all the chances of the history, all the possibilities of the world and the real subject, but above all a dimension that we don't have inside, but a, di a dimension in which we are immersed, merged, with, without a, a real distinction, without a, a real possibility to, to have, in other terms, a, a representation of the unconsciousness. It is impossible because uh, it, it is not an object. If the unconsciousness is the place, the sim symbolic place, imaginary place where all the, all the opposition, all the opposites disappear because they become one, become an identity. It is impossible to, 
to have an, a representation of the unconscious as if it were an object. It is more or less like the representation of the, the de a deity, a deity, or the, the Brahman, or the Gottheit. It is impossible because given that it is impossible to have to 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 define God as an object, because he is the, the supreme subject, it is impossible to have a representation, a, a, a real a normal idea of God, of Brahman, above all the Nirguna Brahman, above all. So the analytical psychology, uh, that is uh, the psychology uh, founded by Jung, represents one of the proper means to follow the introversion and to get in touch with the, the unconscious dimension, this is a, a problem. Is it, and this second question is more relevant. It is useful for everybody in the world, given that every part, every country or culture of the earth is modernizing and therefore is undergoing a trial of westernization of personal extroversion, dissolving the living relationship with, with its own cultural roots. In other terms, we, we have, have the, the temptation to steal yoga meditation from the Orient. But in, at the moment in, in, in which all the countries, all the world, becomes becomes uh, westernize itself in a, follows in other terms uh, a, a westernization of or a, a, a process of westernization also the orient uh, uh, become, become be, be becomes uh, uh, without its own their own cultural roots religious rules in this sense we we have to give back to to the world the instruments of the analytical psychology they need sooner or later also the easterners easterners uh, will need of uh, a psychological instruments because of they are losing the, 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 their own religious and cultural roots because the modernity implies, entails this, 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 uh, this fact as, as the relationship be between Westerners and Christianity. In any case, as we saw, the unconscious has to be recognized, given that its activation produces the phenomenon of dilatation, deformation, inflation of the usual borders of the consciousness. Jung, Jung names the, the, this, this profile of the Westerners um, of Western mentality as, uh, as if our mentality was inflated, deformed, de dilated. In other terms, the consciousness knows more than the consciousness knows without knowing it. Our consciousness, our mind knows more than it knows without knowing it. And this is the reason why we, our consciousness absorbs the uh, unconscious contents without knowing it. And this is the dilatation, the inflation of the normal, so-called normal mind of the modern man. And uh, therefore, 
there is a, a disillusion process and an, an increase of potential knowledge. Uh, this, this is also clear, according to Jung. We disinvested without knowing it precisely. Disinvested, we discover that all the external, the, the supreme value and the, the collective dominance in the external world are only projections, only our psychic projections. Uh, uh, from this point of view is, uh, 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 as always we, we can say, a double movement, uh, uh, an ambivalent uh, sign, a sign of alienation because in this way we become inflated. But at the same time, we become adult, we, we are disilluded, we, we uh, accumulate a certain potential of knowledge, and a, a potential knowledge. And Jung says we can only grow up, overcome our childishness, and then become a child again. And this is a, a process, you know, a, if, if you want, uh, this is the, the, the typical ideal process of a psychotherapy. Try to, to discover how to become adult, how to become grow up. And in this sense, we have to recognize our, our childish condition uh, notwithstanding what we believe to, to be, what we believe to represent, we have to admit our child, childish, childishness just to become a grow up. But when we become a, an adult, we have to become again a child because Otherwise, we, 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 remain, we, we remain stupid, a stupid man, stupid human being, because we, we, this means that we rationalized the life. And this is impossible. We have to submit to external divine forces, the unconscious forces, because the, the, the life is too deep to be rationalized only conceptual the first consequence is that if you destroy an, an idea or an idol you incorporate the thing destroyed in other in, in other in other terms if you discover something external as a projection you realize that it is a projection uh, in the sense that this is not the idol you believed before. This is not, uh, this is not uh, the presence of uh, a deity. Uh, uh, this is not, uh, I don't know, uh, this lake, uh, this stone is not uh, animated by a spirit, but it, it is a, a simple stone you recognize the projection and you destroy the thing. But in, at that time, you incorporate the, the thing in the, in the sense that you, you, you take inside you the energy of that thing. You, you reactivate, in other, in, in, other, in other terms, your unconsciousness. From, from which the, the divine energy comes. And therefore, the second consequence is, uh, who am I that all this happens to me? This is the, the Copernican revolution, for, according to Jung. If the external world is destroyed, is recognized as projection, 
you have to, we have to ask, to say to ourselves, who am, who are we that all this happened to, 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 to us? This is an inversion of responsibilities. This is not due to the other. And I complain all the time that the other is, is, is uh, 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 do, does this or, or, or does that. But it's up to me. It's uh, my problem. A mind or a consciousness inflated for Jung, the trait of the zeitgeist, of the spirit of the time, means a consciousness regressed to the unconscious, which ignores the presence of the, the unconscious, even if this, unconscious, this consciousness is full of unconscious contents. In other terms, this mind Lose, loses the faculty of discrimination. This consciousness is as a result of an over expansion and absence of measure as consequence of being pushed to the extreme limits of its own possibilities. And this is the hybris in Greek word. The, the, the hybris is the absence of measure and the inflection of a consciousness. A consciousness inflated means exactly the, uh, an absence of measure, a deformation of, of a mind. In similar way, Heidegger says, that we still don't think that we that the thoughtlessness is our feature because we believe that thinking is calculating and planning the actual way of thoughtlessness but we forget that the real uncultivated field of thoughtlessness and we ignore the real recall present in the not thinking. That is the not thinking meant as possibility. The not thinking is at the same time as for Jung, also for Heidegger, uh, as a double meaning. It is a a, a way of not thinking because we 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 planning we plan and calculate everything and in this way this is not calculating and planning is a not a not thinking way to be at word but at the same time the not thinking is the possibility of thinking the point in which we are on the verge of thinking, but we, 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 we don't still think, not yet. And from this point of view, the not thinking, the thoughtlessness is the, the, the blueprint of, of our epoch, of, of our contemporary condition. We need to recognize the presence of the unconscious, neither to act our over expansion, not to think to dissolve it. That is, we have to recognize the presence of the darkness, of the unknown, of the shadow. If the inflation is the negative effect, but inevitable in the secret history of the unconscious where a content emerges as a symbol, the better expression for something unknown, Jung says, against the background of illusion and projections, 
it is believed for a certain time, giving rise to a certain new mentality and culture in the collective consciousness until this content will become dry and that symbol will die and a new content will come. This is uh, the, the secret history of the unconscious, according to Jung. If the inflection is the negative effect, the acknowledgement of the unconscious as a shadow represents the positive effect. Positive effect which comes from the breakdown of the collective dominance and more precisely from the long wave of Christianity. The imitatio Christi, the imitation of Christ is treated as nowadays, step by step, century by century, as metaphoric, only a, a metaphor, the imitatio Christi, but not a real path. And the paradox, paradoxical antinomy of the dogmas, the normal, the normal effects of the unconscious uh, put in the Christianity, uh, uh, interpret, rationalized as absurdities. The normal mind of, of a European uh, citizen uh, uh, believes that the dogmas are, are absurdities, are stupid way or primitive way forms of, uh, of, try, of trying to think, but it is a, a, a primitive form of thinking. Uh, uh, and this is, this is uh, the, this determin determines the crisis of Christianity. If, uh, and this is the reason why, if the Christian mentality is characterized by the light of the spirit, this hidden wave involves a new attention to the shadow, a new look in words inspired by the Eastern mentality, a devaluation and degradation of the object, just to realize a detachment from it and to obtain a change, a different knowledge and a new orientation. That is a new orientation represented by a new center, the self, the Atman. The criticism of Christianity is certainly in name of this shadow, the fourth with respect to the Trinity. Jung confirms the rightness of enhancing a quaternity interpretation of the Trinitarian formula, according to which the Holy Ghost as a synthesis of the original one, which then becomes split, issues from a source that is both light and dark. In the proposal of the schema of quaternity, there are two antithetic correspondences. On one end, we have the polar identity of Christ and his adversary, the devil. And on the other, the unity of the father unfolded in the multiplicity of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit. According to Jung, the, the Trinity is not enough. The Trinity, the, the principal concept of, the, of Christianity is actually a quaternity. And because, because of the, 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 the evil is not a privatio boni. It's only, and, and the darkness is not only a privatio lucis. In other terms, it's not a, a privation of, of, of only of light, only of good. But, but the adversary of Christ, the, the, the devil, uh, in other terms, the antithetic position 
is necessary to give a reality to the to the Trinity of of Christianity. Just as the transition from the first stage to the second demands the sacrifice of childish dependence. So at the transition to the third stage, an, ex an exclusive independence, independence has to be relinquished. This is the, the what, what I what I said say what I'm saying before. The in other terms, we have the criterion of adulthood does consist uh, at, at the beginning in a, in a sacrifice of, of the dependence. We have to abandon our childish child, pos child position and the, the, pre the literal presence of the father, of the, of the parents, of the family. But when we become adult, when we become independent, when we become uh, grow up, we have to sacrifice. We have, Jung uses a, a, a fantastic blueprint. We have, to, we, we have to submit to the spirit of one's independence. As, as, I, as I said before, we, we have to submit ourselves not to an idol, another idol, even if it is always possible to, to find again a meaning in the religion, in the previous religion, for instance. It is always possible to submit, to submit certain degrees of our personality too deep to, to be rationalized also to the authority of the previous religion, if possible, when possible. Otherwise, we have to submit in any case, Jung says, to the authority of the unconscious, or if you want, to the authority of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, because all, we have to become child again in this sense. We remain adult in, 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 a, sense, in, the, in the sense that we have, uh, we have completed the first step, becoming independent. But then we have to sacrifice, to submit this total impossible independence, becoming as Christ used to say, becoming child again, only becoming child, we enter the heaven. And not to remain the child we were. We have to lose the child, the childhood to reconquering it at, at the end, at, at the end of the pro, during the process. What is the fourth in fact, for Jung, as we have already seen, it is everything that has no place and it is therefore excluded from the Trinitarian structure and it becomes its opposite. These exclusions concerns in moral terms, the presence of the evil and in general, that of the imperfection. With respect to the intelligibility, we have the obscurity of the nature. With respect to the spirit, we have the corruption of the matter. With respect to the microcosm in relationship to the mind, we have the gravity, the decadence, and the caducity of the body. With respect to the rationality, we find the irrational realm of the pain and sorrow, of black terror of death, of cruelty, of aggression, of, of instincts. With respect to the obedience, we have the free will, the conflict, the protest, the disobedience. With respect to the gender, 
we have the femininity and with respect to the activity of the logos, we have the passivity of the female part, the patience, the capacity of waiting, the hospitality, the willingness to generate, the possibility. We're, with respect to the waking state of the existence, we have, we meet the dream from a cultural point of view next to the Christianity, we have the presence of the Gnosticism and the alchemy. And with respect to the consciousness, we have the presence and historically speaking, the discovery of the unconsciousness. With respect to the light of the reason, therefore, we have the presence of the shadow, a typical, atypical, comprehensive Jungian world. And with respect, therefore, to the ego, the presence of the self. And if you, if you want, you, 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 can, you can observe, you can remind all this list. And if, if, if you can observe how this list is actually the list of the current topics, the topics of our modernity are this list, precisely this list. All these uh, uh, notions, uh, what, what is at stake nowadays, are uh, uh, the fourth, represents the fourth, according to Jung. What remain, is remained excluded by the Trinity, the Trinitarian uh, Christianity. And, and this is the reason why, according to Jung, we remain Christian, because we, we, we are in the shadow, in the fourth of, of Christianity. And from this point of view, we never overcome, not yet overcome the, the Christianity, notwithstanding its crisis, its dec declining process, or the agnosticism, the so-called atheism, we remain Christian. We remain in the, in the, in the wake of, of Christianity. Now we, we saw the, also the importance of the mandala during the absence of new collective dominance, the mandala plays the role of mediator in the fracture or, or in the dissociation between collective unconscious and consciousness. In condition of emergency, of crisis, the mandala, uh, the mandala does, uh, is, a, is a means, is a tool by which we, it could objectify the images, the symbols coming from the unconscious in favor of the consciousness, which in her to, on her turn reflects the same image toward the unconscious without disturbing it. In other terms, the mandala, according to Jung, is the plays the, the role of me mediation between unconscious and consciousness and objectifying the images that come from the unconscious, collective unconscious. And uh, uh, instead of uh, determining the ism, the normal ism, neo-capitalism, communism, fascism, uh, uh, Nazism, uh, and so on. Uh, according to Jung, the, the, typical, the typical effects of uh, the absence of collective dominance, uh, and so the, the inflation, the, the, uh, the presence, uh, the, the, the pathological presence of the unconscious in the 
conscious domain, the, the, I mean the presence of this ism, instead of it, the, the mandala, the presence of, of mandala in the, in the vision and in the, in the dreams of the, of the modern man, modern individuals, means that we have a mediation between the uh, through images between in unconscious and consciousness uh, with a, a calming effect. Th this is a, the, 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 the psychic system uh, reaches a, a sort of balance, an equilibrium. And, uh, and uh, when, when a, uh, a, a mandala appears in, in this vision or dreams of individuals, we have, uh, this means uh, uh, that the mandala protects and isolates the center of personality, the center of personality. The, the mandala from this point of view, the mandala is a, a, the magnifying glass and the crystal of the entire process. It receives the images from the unconscious, fixed images, typical images from the dogmatic series, if the tradition is still alive. The, from this point of view, Jung speaks about the yoga, for instance, in, 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 in uh, Eastern side of the world, no? Uh, it is a codified path, the same images, the same steps, the same stages. Uh, according to Jung, this could work only if the tradition is still alive. But sooner or later, the unconscious will produce, Jung says, shades of meaning with respect to the stimuli of the consciousness which are no longer adequately expressed by the traditional symbol. And this is the reason why sooner or later, these codified images, codified symbol die, evidently. They become useless. But at the same time, we can say that its capacity of varying, it's not indefinite or infinite. It is impossible for a symbol, for a codified symbol, uh, try to, to, to vary uh, to, uh, to, uh, 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 beyond a certain extent, to, to a certain extent, to a certain limit. Sooner or later, the symbol doesn't, doesn't work. And from this point of view, it, it is a real, maybe the only point of the equilibrium, this, this mandala, notwithstanding, notwithstanding it's a, not in infinite capacity of varying, of varying. Not, not by chance, Jung says, Jung speaks of the possibility that uh, when the perfect union of all energies is attained, there arises a static state subject to no more change. And from this point of view, not by chance, Jung, as we, we saw, as we, we, we saw in the previous lectures, Jung speaks of the necessity of a reversed high, un occhio rivoltato, un gewandent auge. He quoted Jacob Böhme, just to say how it is impossible to see, we, we need to reverse the eyes, just to, to, to see this process, this mandala. 
not by chance, it, it is a not a intentional product. It is a, an, an unconscious product. Not, not by chance, it compares, it, it appears only in the, in the dreams, in the vision, spontaneous visions. All the, pro all the process seems to be included and recorded within it. For instance, it includes the variations implied in the differentiations work of the consciousness. Here we find a second, more positive, fatal explanation for the collapse of the collective dominance. These last are consumed and exhausted until they appear implausible and dead symbols. But the variation, the differentiation, therefore the development of the consciousness seems to be unstoppable, necessary, a sign of fate, of the secret hidden history of the unconscious. For instance, do you remember the, pre the presence of the, the third person, I, the third hypostasis, the, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost of the Trinity? Do you, do you remember that uh, while, whereas uh, the, the, the Son unifies, the Holy Spirit diversifies? And uh, during the day of the Pentecost, uh, the spirit blows as, uh, as uh, tongues of fire on each apostles. And this is the, the, the reason why the, the spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, keep, keeps uh, place, find, place only in each person, in each of us. Therefore, uh, there, is a, there is a sort of uh, diversifying effects. And, uh, and this is also the, 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 the importance of the variation of the mandala. We, we need, each of us needs to have its own image in, in the mandala. And this is not only a, a defeat, uh, a, an impossible task, a sign of alienation, but also maybe a spiritual sign of destiny, G given that it, is, it would be supported by, for instance, the advent of the third persons, the Holy Spirit. At the same time, a sign of alienation and a sign, a fatal sign. Not by chance, the modern mandalas appear equipped by the same healing charge compared to the ritual, traditional, codified mandalas. But they are individual mandalas whose motives are unlimited, free, not codified. Their center, Jung noted, is empty, whereas in the ritual mandalas, a deity occupies the center. Here, as we saw, the center and its power is represented by many different figures, like precious stones, stars, flowers, bowls, snakes, rings, golden rings, and so on. The place of the deity seems to be taken by the wholeness of man. As magnifying glass and crystal, the mandala lets recognize the passage and summarizes the process. This is a very important process. The gods at first lived superhuman power and beauty on the top of snow-clad mountains or in the darkness of caves, woods, and seas. Later on, they drew together into one God, 
and then the God become, became man. But in our day, Jung wrote, even the God man seems to have descended from his throne and to be dissolving himself in the common man. That is, Jung adds, probably why his seat is empty, the seat of the mandala, with respect to the traditional mandalas, whose center was occupied by a deity, by a, an image of God, of Shiva, of, of uh, Parvati, of, uh, of Buddha, of Christ. The common man, not by chance, suffers from a, a hubris of consciousness that borders on the pathological. The appearance of the mandalas are, in any case, in a vision or in a dream of an individual, seems to represent a relief with respect to these hubris, as we know. They very, their very first goal, Jung says, is to bring a consciousness that has hurried too far ahead into con contact again with the unconscious background with which it should be connected. It is a task that today faces not only individuals, but whole civilizations. What else is the meaning of the frightful regressions of our time, Jung wrote, the temple of development of consciousness through science and technology was too rapid and left the unconscious, which could no longer keep up with it, far behind, thereby forcing it into a defensive position, which expresses itself in a universal will to destruction. So we have the mandala. And uh, Jung says, one almost might say that man is himself or his innermost soul is the prisoner or the protected inhabitant of the mandala. In other terms, the unconscious produces the idea of a deified or divine man who is imprisoned, concealed, protected, usually depersonalized and represented by an abstract symbol. Is, it is not maybe precisely the condition in which we live now. Last time I was wondering to what extent the process of differentiation of, or variation and dissolving could arrive. After the scattered gods of nature, the one God, the God man, the common man, how is going on the sequence? What can contain and expose the today mandala? We continue to speak about human being, taking for granted that this is the last unit of measure. The scene of global extroversion is nowadays more confused and problematic. The modernity is completing this parabolic curve which we have to follow and know. The extroverted present suffers now a process of intensification and acceleration of permanent refining. It is rather a set of evanescent moments which don't last and the consciousness consequently is contracted as a spasm. If you are conscious of millions of things that it seems to you, you are conscious of nothing. Your consciousness is then too blurred. Never before the humanity has been so numerous, eight billion. And never before this quantity seems to represent a rather a multitude, a real multiplicity, 
where each of, of it is potentially significant and unique, singular, although maybe useless or risking the uselessness, Jung says the problem cannot be solved collectively because the masses are not changed unless the individual changes. At the same time, even the best looking solution cannot be forced upon him since it is a good solution only when it is combined with a natural process of development. The bettering of a general ill begins with the individual and then only when he makes himself and not others responsible. You, you, you know, you, you can note uh, how it, it is very, very strange. We, we can desperate ourselves because if each of us is, is, is uh, as to change, it, it is almost impossible to, to reach in, use, in, in useful time the, the quantity of eight billions of individuals. At the same time, it is impossible not to note that only this is the, the right way to face the problem, step by step, individual by individual. Each individual of our innumerable um, multitude represents already an infinitesimal difference. This is the last degree of the process of the mandala. Many gods, one god, god, god man, the, then the, the Christ, the god man descends by his throne and becomes co a, common, a common man. After the common man, we have an infinitesimal difference definition which bears a double paradox. It is a difference common to everyone of this multitude and therefore an equivalent difference. First the contradiction, first the paradox and as infinitesimal, a short lived duration and not performable. Uh, it is an evanescent difference. It, is, it isn't only a logical standby, but an existential historical situation. Now, if we, and I, 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 I'm going to conclude, if we outline the contemporary mandala as we should do, meant as a result of a process of individuation of the supreme value formless after the death of God, a process without any possibility to, fo to follow a model. We, we saw the, the impossibility to, to imitate Christ. We have to follow the, the blueprint the Nietzschean blueprint, become what you are. You have to be yourself. You have to live your own life. You, are, you have to know who you are. And also in these uh, blueprints, you can hear, you can listen to the, the double, the ambivalence, because this is the supreme sign of individualism, but uh, you can hear also the presence of Ramana Maharshi, who you are, who am I? Beacon, at the same time, become what you are is a, a trap or is a, a solution of the trap. So if we, we, can, we can summarize the, the contemporary man, mandala in this way, if the infinitesimal difference is our status. It could, it could be the tree of contemporary life. 
or better the blade life on the top uppermost we can find the smallest and the most precise vital and essential detail of the living form of a thing maybe its look its personal effects its animal in german that is all in once only unpredictable and unrepeatable or its resonance its dvani dvani sonorous vibrations its breath its prana on the top therefore the smallest and the most precise detail of a living form of a thing this would be the ultimate state of refinement of the unconscious divine libido the contemporary elixir our philosophical stone the corpus incorruptible our diamond body our uncorruptible body not but at the same time not like a stone strong like like a stone but delicate and fragile no not farther farther and no more determinable where the opposites reach the highest level of their interpretation and therefore where it arises a static state subject to no more change the, the smallest detail a culminating point of a thing where a thing has finished to happen has become all that it could become a point which is impossible to perceive through natural sensing or theoretical eyes rather a point of meditation of contemplation exactly with reversed eyes you need silence the second level that is the so called living form having reached this culminating point is no longer the ordinary usual normal flowing form which runs according to the time this form has become all that it could become this naturally natural ordinary microscopic form is now still immobile deposed interrupted sprained and untied from this the series the flow which is always involved when one speaks about an apparently single isolated photogram instead of a living form rather an image a broken form a still life maybe an archive of other multiple breath in which this this broken form are is dissolving the third level but it is true that we have no known the things in in the in movement while they flow in the time in the concatenation of their forms in their length in their logical articulation and in their narrative connection there will always be the tendency the impulse to interpret the interruption as a transitory pause with respect to the movement as a simple stop before the movement starts again waiting for its recovery even if its horizontal capability is already consumed totally experienced and definitely concluded even if only the vertical direction remains active as a wings as leaping given that as we saw the supreme energy now formless and free in the unconscious as no longer revealed itself linearly in a series of steps and stadiums but rather it gives all its possible to the momentarily manifestation as we saw the detail the once only the personal effect the look the breath 
the prana, which as soon as it presents itself, it has already passed. These three levels, the breath prana, the broken or deposed form, the interrupted movement are interwoven and interconnected in the mandala, in the contemporary mandala, which represent the whole. So we have four elements, the breath, the prana, the broken or the post form and the interrupted movement and the mandala which contains the whole. And this represents this, this mandala, a living system of images as a sutratman, a real spiritual wire. We, 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 can, we can see, we can look these three elements could be one into the other in aggregate, aggregated form, must all together or in a disaggregate form, elongated form, as the blade of grass or the tree of contemporary life means. In my opinion, introversion means now to turn, to focus our attention with reverse dice to this special mandala, neither exactly the inner world nor the external world, but the interstitial point between them, between these opposites. The mandala, the cornerstone of Jungian thought and the most sensitive instrument to reveal the subtle contradictory variations of our epoch. The mandala too, this mandala too describes in a certain sense, an unconscious process of integration where the multiple is traced back to the one. This mandala represents or could represent as others described by Jung, a religious experience, a religious situation or a mystic one. For instance, as, as, as Raymond Panikar says, used to say, the, a new uh, uh, mystic, uh, uh, the third eye, mystic eye, or a new innocence. Jung, Jung says on his, on his turn, these situations are intense, inner experiences, which can lead to lasting psychic growth and ripening and deepening of the personality. If the individual affected by them as the moral capacity for pistis, a Greek name this, that means loyal trust and confidence. They are the age old psychic experiences that underlie faith and ought to be its unshakable foundation and not of faith alone. We can conclude therefore with some words of Jung, which I share. It would be desirable to know what happens afterwards, but just as neither the philosophical God nor the philosoph philosopher's stone was ever made in reality, so nobody has ever been able to tell the story of the whole way at least not the mortal hears, for it is not the storyteller, but death who speaks the final consumatum est. Certainly, there are many things worth knowing in the later stages of the process, but from the point of view of the process, it is important not to skip too quickly over the initial stages. Thanks a lot. I hope you you can find this uh, this conclusion on on the 
mandala, contemporary mandala of your interest. And uh, I hope, uh, I would like to, to, to say, to thank uh, Kalachari, all the listeners. Uh, thank you. Milena.